It doesn't matter whether you're an actual NFL GM. Maybe you're just creating your own team on Madden. Maybe you're just at the grocery store giving the cashier 10 bucks for a total that was only $9.75. You're all thinking the exact same thing. I need a quarterback. And in the NFL, quarterbacks reign supreme. Look at the contract that Patrick Mahomes just received. It's more than some third world countries. Even Brock Osweiler got paid once and he really sucks. So on draft day, it's important to remember that you're not drafting against a couple 10 year olds and their newfound swear words. No, there is some great value late in drafts at the quarterback position. Hit the like button. I got a couple must have quarterbacks you don't want to miss out on. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. We're talking about a couple must-have quarterbacks here for 2020. Now, is this you know episode meant to say that Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson aren't good? No, it has nothing to do with that. They're the two best in the NFL right now. However, we always talk about drafting quarterbacks later. That's where you find the great stashes, that value. Because sometimes at the quarterback position, the difference between quarterback 3, 4, 5, 6 is minimal. However... You can get a lot of these guys later in your drafts. I got two quarterbacks. One's going to be a little bit earlier than the other. I put a late option in here for the people who are looking for that. But don't forget, the reason that Lamar Jackson was so great and on so many championship teams last year for fantasy football was because you got him right around the eighth round. The year before that, where'd you get Patrick Mahomes? You got him late. Had you spent an early round pick, you know, those years on an Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady or whoever else you wanted to, you would have been disappointed, right? It was those later picks that really put your team over the top that made you a championship contender. So we need to find a couple of those guys a little bit later this year, and that's what we're talking about today. The first guy we're going to be talking about is going to be Matty Ice, Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons. And he's really fallen into that sweet spot, right? Right around round seven or eight or so this year, and things are lining up for Matt Ryan to be about as solid as they possibly get in fantasy football here in 2020. Now, despite missing Calvin Ridley a few games last year and the Falcons trading away Mohamed Sanu midseason, he still threw for 4,400 yards and 26 touchdowns. It was his ninth straight year throwing at least 4,000 yards, and he hasn't had less than 20 touchdowns in a season since his rookie year. Now, I've spoken on this NFC South division for what feels like months at this point. It's built up of teams capable of crazy offense and the Carolina Panthers. I mean, two games against Tampa, two against New Orleans, plus they also have matchups against Dallas, Denver, Kansas City. That's a possibility of seven shootouts just right there. And we know Atlanta loves to throw the ball, like a lot of throwing the football. In 2019, the Falcons threw more than any other team in the NFL with 684 pass attempts. In fact, Over the last eight years, Matt Ryan has had over 600 pass attempts in six out of those eight years. So the opportunities for him to be throwing a lot are for sure there. One thing that really hurt the Falcons last year were some injuries on the offensive line. I mean, starting right guard Chris Lindstrom, he only played five games last year. Then you have left guard James Carpenter, he missed five games himself. And now they all return here in the preseason. They're good, they're healthy, they should really help improve the offensive line for the Atlanta Falcons. I can't say they're one of the best offensive lines out there. However, I can say they're in the top half of the league. They're at least in the top 16. And Matt Ryan, with a clean pocket, is absolutely deadly. He's completed 80.4% of his passes when he's been given that clean pocket, which is third best in the NFL. There's another thing in the past, though, that has really led to the success of one Matt Ryan. It's been an effective pass-catching running back. I mean, it's really no coincidence at all, right, that a couple of Matt Ryan's best years came when Devonta Freeman was averaging right around 1,600 total yards and 13 touchdowns a year. An effective run game, it's always going to open up the passing game. And anything you can do to give Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley a slight advantage 
is absolutely amazing. Well, insert Todd Gurley. Even though most of y'all have lost faith in this guy, he is more than capable of being a running back that can not only run between the tackles, but be involved in the passing game and still demands defensive attention. Is he really going to be that running back that gets 300 carries? No, probably not. But that only helps the chances of Matt Ryan having to throw the ball more. 11 of the 16 games that Matt Ryan will play in will be played indoors, so the threat of weather, really no big deal. The loss of Austin Hooper, it won't hurt that much with the addition of Hayden Hurst, who is more than capable of putting up similar production. Here's the thing. Is Matt Ryan the best fantasy quarterback here in 2020? No, probably not. But he may be one of the safest quarterback ones out there. You know what you're going to get right around the 7th or 8th round. Personally, I would rather draft what I know instead of taking chances on something that we're kind of hoping for. Kind of like a Josh Allen, right? A lot of us are expecting him to take that big step forward, but we know what we're going to get with Matt Ryan. Why not go after the safer option a little bit later? Because we know we've seen his ceiling before, right? He's finished as quarterback two in fantasy football twice in the last four years. The ceiling is still there, but the floor is pretty safe on a weekly basis. And I love me some Matt Ryan here in 2020. Next guy up, he's going to be a little bit later. And he was maybe one of the most popular guys to talk about two months ago. And then people kind of just forget about it. And his ADP isn't improving. So we're going to talk about Drew Locke because he is definitely somebody with some huge value at the end of drafts. I mean, this guy started the offseason as a fan favorite, right? A lot of people were hopping on the bandwagon of Drew Locke as a possible quarterback sleeper, but his ADP really hasn't changed a whole lot. It's still in the 14th round, but I'm telling you, this kid could surprise a lot of people here in 2020. The end of 2019, he led the Broncos to a 4-1 record. In those five starts, he threw for 1,020 yards and seven touchdowns to only three interceptions. And really, that's not a fluke either. I mean, coming out of the 2019 NFL Draft, I said that Drew Locke was the most pro-ready rookie quarterback. A diet Drew Brees, if you will. I mean, the guy had a lot of experience in college, and I knew that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He was full of poise, energy, and confidence. Well... That poise was evident in the red zone last year. In the red zone, he completed 66.7% of his passes, 8th best among all NFL quarterbacks, and he didn't have a ton of weapons to help him. I mean, what, Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant, and that was about it. I mean, the wide receiver with the second most receiving yards in Denver last year was Emmanuel Sanders. He had 367 yards, and he only played seven games before he was traded to San Francisco. That was their number two best wide receiver in Denver statistics-wise last year. So Denver went out this offseason and brought in options aplenty for one Drew Luck. You got Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Albert O, and Melvin Gordon in the run game that are going to strut into this locker room kind of like that slow motion strut from the movie Hangover Part 2. The offensive line could be slightly improved here in 2020. They brought in Graham Glasgow out of Detroit. They were going to get the return of Juwan James, but he decided to opt out. But they still have now second-year left guard Dalton Reisner, who can only be better from his rookie year also. So a slight improvement there in the offensive line. Consider that along with the addition of Melvin Gordon paired him up with Philip Lindsay, and the run game could definitely find success. That success is only going to help open things up down the field for Drew Locke in the passing game. And they're going to need that offense, right? I mean, they're going to have games against Pittsburgh, Tampa, Kansas City twice, Atlanta, New Orleans, even Buffalo and possibly upstart offense Las Vegas could create shootouts for Drew Locke to have to throw the ball a lot. But what could Drew Locke really do here in 2020? Because right now, his ADP currently has him sitting at quarterback 23 in the 14th round. Last year, in his five games that he played, he averaged 31 pass attempts a game, which comes out to be right around 500 pass attempts in a season. These added weapons paint the picture, though, of a little bit more throwing here in 2020. Could he possibly see 550 pass attempts? Because I, I honestly think that's a pretty reasonable number. I mean, we're really only talking about an additional, what, three, maybe four pass attempts a game every once in a while? Yeah, no, I don't think that's an astronomical number. I don't think we're asking too much. But if he can get close, 
to those 550 pass attempts, if we just used league averages, that's going to put him right around that 3,800 to 4,000 passing yards, right in that 25 to 27 touchdown range. And he should, you know, protect the ball fairly well, have him penciled in for right around 8 to 10 interceptions. I mean, just using the league averages there, I mean, that's going to put him in the range of quarterback 6 to quarterback 9. And that's with no rushing stats included. Not that this guy is some rushing superstar by any means, but to say that it's out of the question that he doesn't get right around, what, 50 to 100 yards rushing minimum, that still gives him an additional 5 to 10 fantasy points. And you're telling me that I can get a top 10 quarterback right around the 14th round? I absolutely love that. So if quarterbacks get drafted early and I can load up on skill players, you know, instead of taking those quarterbacks that a lot of people are clamoring to get, I love the way my roster looks. Plus, on the flip side, there's an opportunity at the end of drafts if you want to pair him up. Maybe you don't want to just solely rely on Drew Locke. Grab yourself a Phillip Rivers, a Jimmy G, somebody else late. as a little bit of an insurance policy, but I'm telling you, the upside for Drew Locke is there. And if I pass on quarterbacks at all and I wait to those late double-digit rounds, Drew Locke is a guy that I'm definitely looking for. All right, so those are a few of my must-have quarterbacks here for 2020 fantasy football. There's a lot of availability at the quarterback position, right? There's a ton of names out there that a lot of people wouldn't mind. Try to find somebody that I really like right there in the middle rounds and the late rounds, but we're interactive. Let me know down below what you think. Do you like Drew Locke? Do you like Matt Ryan? If you don't, why don't you? Because these are some pretty solid names. Make sure you state your case down below in the comment section. We love to be interactive with you. Thank you so much for the support. Make sure you hit that like button. If you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing because the channel is full of information like this. Go check it out. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you later.